from New York City, it's Wendy Williams. Today, Lisa G, John Murray, and Nicole Lappin join Wendy's Hot Talk panel to take on this week's biggest stories. Plus, Sharon Osborne lashes out at the ladies of The View. And all the latest juicy hot topics. So Jessica Simpson is banning her father from her own wedding. I totally agree, and we'll talk. Justin Bieber got caught in a compromising position, and Sharon Osbourne is lashing out at the ladies of The View. Let's talk about it and more. It's time for Hot Topics. from New Jersey in the audience today? Yeah. It's Teachers' Convention Weekend. They're really supposed to be in Atlantic City learning new skills. I would imagine you'll be going there right after our show is over today, right? Shout out to all the teachers. So with no school uh, for the kids today, last night we had the hangout of all hangouts. <sighs> all right, I said, you can invite a few people over. Next thing you know, there were about 25 people in the house. Just take a look at their shoes laying on the floor. Yeah, girls and boys, and you know, I said, okay, but everybody has to be out by 10.30, because I still have to work in the morning. So they were gone by 10.45, and then I settled down to my nightly TV, because you know, when you have all those kids in the house, there really is no watching TV. You're on patrol, in a big robe and your mom wig. So, so when I got to my room um, to relax, I caught up with a show that I had never watched before on Oxygen, The Preachers of L.A. <laughs> I die. Okay, so I caught him in a, in a marathon. It was on until like three o'clock in the morning. I literally had to will myself to turn off the TV and get ready for work this morning. But um, I like that show, Preachers of LA. Hey, Oxygen, one request. Can you make a marathon on a Saturday or a Sunday? Uh, during the day, preferably, where it's more convenient for all of us to watch? Just, the, uh, just thanks, Oxygen. <laughs> At commercial time, I went over to the Arsenio Hall show while I was watching The Preachers. And I caught um, the ladies of The Talk lashing out against the ladies of The View. Well, really, there was only one lady lashing out. The very obnoxious Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> uh, look, I can't verify this, but it looked like drinking was involved. <laughs> Take a look, and then we'll talk. Cut to the oh, Stop being polite. Cut to the... Chase. Okay. <laughs> Why don't... The situation is... Why don't you tell us? Yes, yes. The yes. situation is, Barbara, idolize her. Divine. She is superhuman. I love Barbara Walters. The rest can go... <laughs> First of all, I was so distracted by the let's, let's make a deal drapes in the background. <laughs> Arsenio, what a set. Um, but you know what, Sharon? You are so tacky and wrong. I mean, why would you say that about the ladies? The rest of them can go to, you know. Uh, I don't know, are you team Sharon on this? Do you feel as though when, when asked about what you feel about peers who do the same thing you do? I mean, I'm, I'm from Jersey, and yeah, I can admit, I have got a lot of tacky in me. <laughs> but, but there's one cardinal rule that I've set for myself, and interviewers always trying to bait me. So how do you feel about your competition? Why do you think it is your show has lasted so long, Wendy? What is your secret that you have that the others don't have? I become like a piece of wood. They're all so talented. In the meantime, 
in our house, kitchen table talk, hmm, that's where I really do my talking about what I feel about my other uh, cohorts on daytime TV, but that's just not a conversation for polite company. It just isn't, uh, Sharon. You are very unlikable. <laughs> and ladies of The View, please don't stoop to that woman's level. Uh, now, your show comes on ABC right after my show, and I'm feeling like... Right after our show is finished, I want to run into my dressing room to see the, the ladies at The View right at the top of the show to see if they come out and they make this the first rant that they do. See, um, there's that saying, when a, when a dog howls at the moon, that's not the news. It's when the moon howls back that becomes the, moon, the news. So, View, you are the moon. Please don't howl. Not even my tacky behind would howl. So, a lot of people are very upset with the, the security team and people who are minders to Justin Bieber. Well, someone has posted a really creepy video of Justin sleeping, and it's allegedly taken by a female fan in Brazil. First of all, it doesn't even look like he's on a bed. It looks like he's on a pull-out couch. <laughs> now, I'm thinking with the Bieber budget, it'd be better than a pull-out couch, but okay. <laughs> And I know you're wondering, is that really Justin Bieber? Well, those are his tattoos. That's his red hat. That's him. You know, he was sleeping. He was... Here's the thing. He had invited, like, 30 people back to... Girls back to his hotel room to party. And reportedly, he made all the girls sign a confidentiality agreement. He also confiscated their phones. But who these days has just one phone besides me? Most people that I know have... Most people that I know have, like, two and three phones. That's number one. Number two, we're going to talk about this later on on the Hot Talk panel, so I'm not going to give you all of my commentary on it, but I will say that I find there to be nothing wrong with what Justin Bieber is doing, and I'll explain on the Hot Talk panel. <laughs> Let's move along. I mean, as long as it's not my son. <laughs> okay, so the Country Music Awards were on last night. Did, you, did anyone watch? You didn't watch? <laughs> well, Carrie Underwood hosted the show with Brad Paisley, and Carrie changed her clothes nine times, which I love. I, I don't understand how she had the patience. Look at, look at these outfits, though. These are the kind of outfits, no disrespect, Miss Underwood. You would never see these on the red carpet at the Soul Train Music Awards. <laughs> Except for maybe that one. That's a good one. Look at that. Like, really? Yellow flowered pants? Th really? This is what I love, though, lovingly about the country community. There is no pressure to dress to impress. These people go out. I mean, Miranda Kerr, or Miranda Lambert and uh, Blake Shelton looked great also. But look at what Blake is wearing. Because that, that's how they do in the country. It is about the music and, and the hairspray. And you can just wear what you want, you know? I know I'm hosting the red carpet at the Soul Train Music Awards, and those girls will be... Yeah, I go out to uh, Vegas tomorrow, but those girls will be turned. And it's just, you know, if I, if I had a choice between, you know, fashion or just being comfortable and being myself, I'd much rather be a country than a soul. <laughs> you know, in terms of, in terms of, anyway. Um, Miranda, your figure, darling. You've dropped a few LVs. You look good. You know, girls, that's the difference between soccer mom hair and vixen. <laughs> Look what a difference the extensions made. Look what a difference a couple of pounds made. She's virtually unrecognizable. I know Blake likes that, honey. <laughs> uh, she said that she, uh, she was trying to, she wanted to lose weight in time for her 30th birthday, which is coming up. Didn't you always think of her as being a little bit older than 30? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be 30, and she wanted to get it together, and so you have. Good for you. Taylor Swift was the belle of the ball. Uh, there's Taylor, uh, the belle of the ball. She won um, a special award for artists who have achieved success worldwide. I like Taylor Swift a lot. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I always feel guilty for sharing that with you. <laughs> but this is why I like her. I'm coming out of the closet with it right now. First of all, she's 5 feet 11 and handles it like a real gazelle. Second of all, uh, she is only 23 years old, and she's got the world at her fingertips. And, okay, I have heard stories about her being nasty and snippy and diva-like to people behind the scenes, but that's not what we see on those award shows. On the award shows, as a matter of fact, she almost does the opposite. She, she's still acting like, oh, my God! I 
can't believe I won. Like she plays it safe and really girl next door. I don't know, I really like her. I think she's very, very pretty. Whether she has the bangs or no bangs, red lipstick or no red lipstick. She's down to earth enough to wear kids. She doesn't always have to be in diva mode with diva shoes. I, I, I like, I like her. <laughs> Far. I mean, in her camp, she must be, you know, she might be that diva that we have read about a little bit. Anyway, so Jessica Simpson and her fiance, Eric, are getting ready to walk down the aisle. But her father, Joe Simpson, is not invited. Now, I co-sign with this. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, your wedding is the, supposed to be the most special day of your life. Well, if your wedding day is the most special day of your life, then you've got some work to do on your life. <laughs> it, is, it is one simple day. I mean, there's so many other things, like the birth of your children, the day you walk across college stage and graduate, the day, you know, you come home after serving around the country. I mean, every life is supposed to have tons of special moments. So this is one day I wouldn't invite him either. either. The National Enquirer says that Jessica has been at odds with Joe since divorcing um, her mom, Tina, last spring. Jessica's allegedly worried that he might cause a scene and take the thunder, perhaps, away from her on her big day. Now, see, my thing would be, <laughs> Daddy, you're not coming to my wedding because I don't trust who your plus one's going to be. <laughs> to remind you all the tea on Jessica Simpson's father, do I? How you doing, Joe? <laughs> a mess. Well, congratulations, Jessica. And um, Tina, you got a good one. Joe, she'll see you tomorrow at brunch. I mean, you know, one day. So speaking of the Simpsons, her younger sister, Ashley, people are saying might be addicted to plastic surgery. <laughs> See, I don't see addiction, but I do see some surgery. Here are the two sisters uh, looking modern, and this is, you know, in recent times. Uh, Jessica looks great. Ashley looks great. But Jessica looks greater. <laughs> um, Ashley famous, famously got her nose job back in 2006. Best money ever spent. <laughs> really? Best money ever spent. And it looks like she might get a little <laughs> on her top lips. But according to the star, Ashley is also a regular use, uh, user of fillers and plumpers. Listen, she's still very young. She's like, what, 29 years old. She's been married and divorced, and she has a child. But I have to say, that is the best use of filler work. And I, look, you know, as a, as a modern woman, I say do what you need to do, especially if you have a sister as beautiful as Jessica Simpson, and you're the frog on the side. Go for it, Ashley. It's Jessica who has the problem with her doing this, probably because Jessica doesn't want her sister to be as pretty as her. <laughs> you know how you pretty girls are. You always want to be the prettiest one in the room. Mm -hmm. Anyway, look, Ashley, don't tell Jessica what you do. Just go get your procedures, wait like a month or two, let everything settle, and then go see her. But Ashley, you better be careful because I know that um, from what I can see, you haven't worked in a long time until your sister, Jessica, with the fabulous clothing line and shoe line that she has, Ashley has become the main model, so she is the face of the line. Now, from a business standpoint, I get what Jessica's saying. You know, Jessica's clothes aren't meant for, like, high glamour girls. They're really great, you know, just really great stuff, really bohemian and earthy. The comfortable stuff, the good stuff, and the affordable stuff. And Ashley is the face of the line. And it's because it's not a glamorous brand that Jessica Simpson has, she doesn't want you to be all plumped up and filled up with red lipstick and everything. She wants you earthy, playing in a wheat field <laughs> with, a, with a natural look. So be careful, or you might get fired by your own sister. <laughs> That's all. So now, you know Avril Lavigne, the singer? You know she's married. Yeah. She married this guy named Chad Kroger. Um, he's a rock star from... Um, Nickelback, the group. Well, they've been mar married for uh, four months, and they've set some interesting rules for their marriage. When they're not together, they don't go to nightclubs and they don't drink. No, I understand the nightclub part, but the drinking part, really? <laughs> Life is better with a drink. <laughs> And the 
thing about the nightclub is so weird because I know nightclubs are notorious for the loud music and, you know, people hooking up and everything, but you realize that could happen at lunchtime around the corner, right? If, like, like, if you're going to cheat, you're going to cheat. Remember, like I always said, it, it's only seven minutes or a hundred pumps done. <laughs> You, you don't need, you don't need the nightclub. And as far as the drinking, okay, I smell that somebody must have a problem and turn into another person when they drink. Um, because a, a grown adult at lunchtime with her girlfriends or in the evening with a glass, of, I don't, I want a divorce. <laughs> I do, I do. D do you find, clap if you find the drinking thing ridiculous, like you can't drink. Yeah. I think I'd say yes, but have my fingers crossed behind my back <laughs> and carry my velaments and, and go on about my life. All right, so the newest trend in Hollywood, and perhaps in your hood, is the new pixie cut. You cut off your hair and you keep it short and cute. Pam Anderson cut hers off, we already talked about it. Jennifer Hudson cut hers off. Although, you remember the big deal I made about Jennifer Hudson's hair that day? I was saying it was so thick and beautiful. After the show, all right, I'm walking around the Wendy hallways and everybody's giving me the side eye, like, really, wig lady? You can't tell a wig when you see one? I, 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 I don't know whether that's a wig or not. I mean, it does seem a little bit odd that for a girl who's been weaving it all of her life that she has that much hair, because, you know, for a lot of, you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And if it is a wig, then it's a good wig. Should they got baby hair realness? Look. Baby hair realness and good thickness. I like it. If, if it's a, it doesn't even matter whether it's a wig or a weave or whatever. But my people do make a point, Jen. <laughs> anyway, so now um, the actress Jennifer Lawrence has gotten in on the trend. Mm -mm. Very, you got your hair cut at a strip mall in Jersey. <laughs> How very Kate Gosling of you, Jennifer. <laughs> See? back away from the scissors. <laughs> That's okay, because like my wigologist always says, and, and I always have to remind myself, it's just hair. If you don't like it, you weave it or wig it. So it's just hair, but that's just bad hair. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so David Arquette is drinking again. Oh. I, I, wanted, I wanted to catch him to see if they were gonna start clapping. <laughs> <laughs> you are on your toes. You've got a good night's sleep, audience. <laughs> okay, David Arquette is also having another child. Oh. I know. It's the end of an era. It's kind of like, even when you divorce a guy, there's something about him going on and having another child with another woman that it just puts the nail in the we'll never get back together coffin. Oh. So meet the baby's mother. According to um, reports, David's girlfriend's name is Christina McClarity. You know her from Entertainment Tonight. She's a correspondent, and she's four months pregnant. Wow. Now, last month, um, he drunk dialed Howard Stern, <laughs> and and well, look, look, he said he fell off the wagon. You know, Howard, Howard is smart. He detected drunkation in his voice, <laughs> and he admitted he's fallen off the wagon. And all the people around him are very nervous. But you know, as long as you have a drunk person on the phone, you might as well get all the information from him you can. <laughs> so, so David declared that Christina, not Courtney, his ex-wife, mother of the lovely Coco, Christina is the love of his life. <gasps> Who says that? I know, a drunk person, I know, <laughs> I know. But wow, wow, how hurtful is that for Courtney? They were married for many years. And they had trouble having Coco. I know, because I was going through troubles when Courtney was going through troubles. And that's how she became one of my... Do you know she's one of my friends in my head? Well, <laughs> we, we, we bond over Coco. We bond over Coco. How old is Coco now? Nine. She's nine. Yeah. Anyway, um, David, good luck with getting back on the wagon. Oh, by the way, he also um, admitted to Howard that Courtney is no longer with her Cougar Town co-star, uh, the gentleman that she was dating. Um, what's his Ryan name? Ben. Uh, Brian, Ryan, Brian Van Holt, they're no longer together, but she does have another man in her life right now. So she's dating and having fun and hopefully not too upset that he's pregnant with another woman. Hmm. I need a drink after that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. So, Paulie D, 
from the Jersey Shore has finally met his new baby girl. Paulie, Paulie and the baby's mother, Amanda, agreed to meet at a neutral location in New Jersey yesterday. Where is neutral? A rest stop? Oh, I know, the TikTok diner on Route 46? Where is neutral? Anyway. I'll dig and get back to you. No word on how the visitation went, but I can tell you this. He is still battling for sole custody of this little girl. He's even, according to reports, already built a nursery in his Vegas home for his daughter. Pauly, get off of it. <laughs> you know, she's not so far been declared an unqualified mother. Why would you want to rip your daughter from the bosom? Why would a judge give a DJ in Vegas <laughs> from the Jersey Shore <laughs> Full custody. Learn to co-parent. Come on, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Is that it for Hot Topics? Oh. Well, up next, everybody, uh, three outspoken personalities. Join me for our Hot Talk panel. We're gonna talk about all the hottest topics of the week. And I'll continue to talk to you about what I was gonna say about Justin Bieber at the Hot Talk panel, too, so don't miss it. Pretty co-star from Think Like a Man, Regina Hall is here, and she's gonna tell us all about her hot new movie, The Best Man Holiday. It's all the notes like a latte. Best Plus, Wendy's got you covered with the latest celebrity news with her hot topic. It's an all-new Wendy tomorrow. Brought to you by Kellogg's to go. From great starts come great things. Time to discuss this week's hottest topics in the latest edition of Hot Talk. Joining me today, news correspondent Nicole Lappin. Hi, Nicole. Welcome back. Hey, thank you. Also from the Howard Stern Radio Show on Sirius XM, say hello to Lisa G. And TV journalist and editor of alwaysalist.com, say hello to our friend John Mary. Hi, John. All right, let's get into it. Um, Justin Bieber, uh, as we know, recently uh, was photographed in his hotel room, uh, after, or, uh, in his hotel room, but also uh, leaving a brothel in Brazil. And the hotel room was in Brazil as well. Um, allegedly, he left with two prostitutes from the brothel. His supporters are saying, no, you know, it's not a big deal. His uh, actual fans, you know, the kids, it's not a big deal uh, because prostitution is legal in uh, Brazil, and you can uh, pick up a prostitute as young as 18, so he's within the confines. John, what do you think? I mean, double for your trouble, the more the merrier. Why not, why not take two? Listen, the kid can afford it. As long as he was safe, it's a good time. My concerns really is about where is he gonna go musically? Because all these antics at some point, we're not gonna respect him as an artist. He's, he's at a crossroads. He's either right. gonna go one way and become Justin Timberlake, or another way and become Vanilla Ice, That's and he's right. leaning more yeah. towards Vanilla That's Ice. What The funny thing to me is that he sleeps with a, his baseball cap like a stuffed animal and <laughs> pictures in his room. I mean, you know, he's growing up in front of our eyes, so he's having a lot of growing pains, but I don't think it's a good signal to his young fans. If I were his mom, I'd say, you're staying home, you're doing your homework. You know, I'm very, very conservative like that. Well, but his fans are the same girls out there who see this bad boy behavior, in my opinion, as making him even hotter. Like, oh my God, he'd be with a prostitute. That means I have a chance, too. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, he's got to go into... Um, you know, brothel with two huge hunky security guards. Of course people are going to notice him. He can't yeah. just slink in by himself. Well, I mean, I am not Justin Bieber's mama. I know this may come as a shock to you. I'm not his girlfriend. And I know we want to think that this is really going to hurt sales. Yes. But he's laughing all the way to the bank. Exactly. He's like a male version of Miley and Amanda and Lindsay and You Brady. know, my only thing about this is that I wish that his security guards and his, his minders didn't have him go into the brothel. Why couldn't they have just gotten two tricks yeah, at absolutely. the brothel <laughs> and, and, and taken their picture for, to, to submit for approval, send them back to him, and then, you know, handle it on the down low? And what would you rather for him to do? sleep with groupies from place to place. I mean, you know, for this young man and for a lot of these rockers, you know, they are, if you're single, you're traveling the world, there's a girlfriend every place, but a, a random groupie, 
Oh, God, yeah, there's but... so much conversation, whereas you just get right to the action when you get with a prostitute. But the just... groupie that he had in that one video, she recorded yeah, the act. That's the thing. I want to know win. where his security is. Yeah. When you have a night with a jump off, they're supposed to leave when you're done. Although that jump off. Take the non disclosure, walk them to the elevator, well, yeah. and send them hey, on their way. What happened with Prince Archie. Harry? He got videotaped. Everyone's got a camera. Like you said, people are hiding cameras in their yep. bras, you Under know, their wherever. Tongue. You yeah. got the Google glasses now. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. Right. I, I don't know. I, I still think that this kid is winning, although I'm glad he's. He's not my son. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna move on. So let's talk about Eminem because uh, you know his album drops this week and uh, dropped this week earlier, and he's projected to sell almost a million copies within the first week. Ooh. But despite that fact, he continuously uses homo phobic uh, slurs on his album and it's projected to debut at number one and the question is why do you think Eminem gets a pass for using anti-gay lyrics Lisa G well he says that his fans know that he's pro-gay rights he's pro-gay marriage and the words that he uses in his music he says are from back in the day when he started and this is what's comfortable for him and that his fans should know I'm not saying it's right but when did his album sell? Huge. Yeah. So he is she, getting a pass. It's not back in the day. I don't give him a pass. He's no longer in Detroit. He doesn't live in a trailer park anymore. This man is in his 40s. He has a kid. Yeah. Grow up. Your I'll words matter. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I think he gets a pass because he's white. No. I think if Jay-Z did the same thing, they'd be calling have his for neck. Beyonce to divorce him. Yes, yes. He gets a pass because he's white, is in my opinion. And also. He's very irresponsible using, for instance, the derogatory word for gay people that starts with an F. That word was just a word used. I'm 49 right. years old. Remember when that word was, was uh, it was just uh, like a stupid person. It had nothing to do with gay. Exactly. But then you grow up and you realize it's a gay thing, and then you stop right, using but it. but Wendy, people are buying his albums. You come from radio. You have the power. If you don't like something, you don't buy that CD. So what is it saying about the public that's buying his here's music? Here's my problem with the situation, though. There are these groups that go after people who use these words. Yep. Here's a man who's a repeat offender. They went after my friend Roland Martin, who used to be on CNN uh -huh. because they took a joke of his that they thought was a, a, a homophobic joke and they did a whole campaign trying to get him fired really? and it was taken out of context. So you have somebody who you targeted who was an implied joke but you have a repeat offender well, and you're not going after him. Where are the glad people? Where are the people? Well, Why aren't they mad about this? What they say is, is that, you know, he, he, and he, a person that he's very, very close to is Elton John. And Paula and, Dean has black friends. And so so he's black, the exactly, exactly. I don't agree with it, but there's the, the information. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, okay. So, at a recent Halloween party, we all know Derek Huff was spotted um, hanging out with his sister's ex, Ryan Seacrest. We talked about this yesterday on Hot Topics, and I don't like that they remain friends. I think that that's a, that's a violation of family. Um, you know, when you, when you split up with somebody, choose a side, because you can't remain my friend and his friend. So what are you going to do? You might not feel the same way, Nicole. Why not? Because what happened in this relationship, this was the tamest relationship in Hollywood history. I don't even think I saw these guys kiss, ever. <laughs> there was no adultery. Uh, there was no domestic violence. There was no any drama. She, so what's she, the big deal? I don't want Rihanna's brother hanging out with no, Chris Wendy, Brown. Wendy, I agree with you, but though. This is a different situation. I, I wrote in my book, Sex, Lies, and Cookies, that I have a no-fly <laughs> zone. If you break up with a guy, I don't care if you're in New York, L.A., every place in between, you cannot go near him a friend a close friend a brother a sister I think it's very difficult yeah it I is. disagree more listen my manager is Janetta Patton her son is Usher she's still good friends with Chili who we all know Usher and Chili in a high-profile relationship he's been divorced wait a minute this he's <laughs> single again all of that Janetta was here with Chili at the TLC movie premiere in New York they're still good friends if it doesn't end bad you can stay connected who is Janetta to Usher uh Janetta's Usher's mom Oh my, and really? My manager. Yes, I don't stepped up in the game, Wendy. I've stepped well, up. I need a new mother. <laughs> I, I, that, really, really, Janetta? Wow. Like, don't you think it's hard when Chili's you break up with Chili's a good girl. They can stay friends. I know Chili's a good girl, school? but no, they can't. They were married. It didn't end. But they weren't. No, she oh, was, no, no, she wasn't married, but they broke up. Yeah, but just because you break, listen, you bring these people in folks' lives. You make me want to like them. You want me to engage with them. Just because you break up with them doesn't mean I have to get rid of them. And now I need you to break up with them. Oh, that is such a violation of it all. All right, let's talk about the Halloween costumes. Um, a young woman was. Oh, we're gonna go to the break. Okay, up next, everybody. You won't believe the Halloween costume that I want to show you, and it was one that got a woman fired. We'll talk next.
sitting at the table with our hot talk panel. All right, so Halloween. <sighs> it's an event that I love and I can't wait for it to be done with. And the reason why is because it brings out the stupidness in many people. There's this 22-year-old girl who dressed as a Boston Marathon bomb victim and posted the picture of herself online. Well, the internet exploded in rage and she subsequently wound up, wound up losing her job. Yeah, well, and my question for the panel is, do you deserve to lose your job for a stupid costume like this? Yes. Nicole? Absolutely, this is ridiculous judgment. Twitter wasn't invented yesterday. Okay, she's not in Boston. I don't care, okay. she's still stupid. You represent your company, especially today. <laughs> Wherever you go, you really represent your company. And you have to realize, as a young person, every young person out there, that your, everything you post on social media will follow you your entire career. You've got to realize that. Um, I don't know how old this woman is, but I know she's, oh, she's 22 years old. So 22 years old, your working life is over because I would have fired you right away also. And furthermore, attached to her resume from now on when she, apl she applies photo. for jobs, there's going to be that photo. She's a, she's a total wackadoo. Like, they needed to get rid of her, send her home. She does not operate in well, sound judgment. You can't make decisions on my job when you don't think that something like that is in poor taste. That's all I'm saying, exactly. Yeah. You know, poor taste. All right, so let's move on to the other offensive costumes that are fireworthy. Um, Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman mm. in full blackface with that one also. Uh -oh. What are people thinking? I have no idea. This Listen, is... if you want to dress up like Trayvon Martin, don't get mad if someone treats you like he was treated. <laughs> and then get away with murder for it. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, have you seen the Twin Towers? Look at these I... girls. How <laughs> Twin Towers. can people be? They, they're missing a chip. They, they are missing. They won the Halloween costume contest at that bar, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, someone had to uh, tell them, like, no, this isn't, isn't a right thing to do. This is very insensitive. And it's not just Halloween. I mean, if people are going to be stupid, they're going to be stupid. But Halloween just seems to magnify the stupidity. I say we cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Uh, they're canceling well, wait, everything else in the what, schools, Wendy. Why not? What I, happened to the good old days when you dressed up as Fred and Wilma or something innocent, right? I thought I was flying my Adidas tracksuit calling myself LL Cool John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being here. For more information on my panelists, go to wendyshow.com. You keep it here. Up next, we're going to play a really fun game in our audience. Keep it here. It's getting cold out there, so let's heat things up. It's Hot Monday with a full hour of your favorite hot topic. Plus, Real Housewife and Real Life Hot Topic Portia Stewart stops by to tell me about all the drama brewing in Atlanta. It's going to be good. It's an all-new Wendy, Monday. We're saving a seat for you. which is older we haven't done in a while so i'm really excited this is where we put two audience members to the test to see um a photo of two different things and then you guess which one is older i'll explain as we go along you'll see all right let's meet our first contestant um how you doing how you doing what's your name brandy hi brandy where are you from savannah georgia here i'm gonna give up my mic only for one second all right give it, back, give it back 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 okay Okay, Brandy, which is older, Denzel Washington or instant coffee? <laughs> don't help her, don't help her. It's oh. a good game, I told you. Instant coffee. I think my grandma was making instant coffee. Yes, you're I'm right. Go with that. Instant coffee. <laughs> well, guess uh, something. Blue Ivy. Uh, <laughs> you would be correct. <laughs> Blue Ivy is older. I have never heard of that. Blue Ivy. It, well, because you're not from here. It's, it's big here in New York. Oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> Blue Ivy is 21 months, and the Cronut is six months old. And delicious. <laughs> okay. Which is older, Lindsay Lohan or the GPS? I know this one. Oh, maybe I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, I don't know. No, the GPS. <laughs> uh, did you realize that GPS has been around for 40 years? <laughs> Lindsay, I know. <laughs> Lindsay's 27. Um, okay, so now let's go to our next contestant. Thank you, you did okay. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> so what's your name, where are you 
from? I'm Lorraine from Wool Township, New Jersey. Very nice, Jersey girl. Okay, Lorraine, which is older, Britney Spears or Cheetos? Ooh, well, I remember eating Cheetos, so I'm gonna say Cheetos. Let's see if she's right. You are correct. <laughs> Cheetos are 55 and Britney is 31. Okay. All right, so uh, which is older, Jennifer Aniston or the Chia Pet? Oh, boy. I know. Say, Jennifer Aniston or the Chia Pet? I'm going to go with Jennifer. Let's see if she's right. <laughs> Woo! <Yes. laughs> Jennifer is 44 and the Chia Pet is 36. Okay, here's your final question. Which is older, me, I'm 49. <laughs> Or the remote control, you know, for the TV. I know that. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. I will never say you, Wendy. I'm your favorite fan. Thank you. <laughs> so the remote control. You're right. <laughs> the remote control is 63. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, did you like that game? Did you, yeah. did you learn something? Uh, it's one of my favorite games ever. And everybody's going home a win winner. Here, uh, take a Wendy t-shirt and pass one down. Congratulations Thank to both you. of you ladies. Thank you for being here. Ask Wendy is next. We'll be right back. <laughs> Fabulous is just a click away. Go to wendyshow.com and click on Shop Wendy. T-shirts, my diva fans, my favorite mugs, and more. How are you shopping? <laughs> Uh, actually, we've been doing Ask Wendy. No, we played the game. Okay, well. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? My name is Jay Marie. I have a question. So, I've been dating a guy for a few months, and two weeks ago was his birthday, and his ex-girlfriend called him. Should I be worried or concerned that there's something going on? Um, I wouldn't be worried, but I would be concerned. Um, I categorize a few as three. How many months have you been dating? You said a few months. A few months, yeah, like two or three. Like two or three. Um, I'd be concerned. Right. Um, I would also have a direct conversation with him without right. seeming really jealous, jealous. but concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, if your ex is, then can we <laughs> stop this behavior? Right. I don't check on my exes, when, you know, when their birthdays right. come around. Right. Yeah, it's not fair. No, it's not. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? Hey, Wendy, my name is Yolanda. How you doing? Hi, Yolanda, how can I help? <laughs> my best friend's been dating a guy for about five years on and off. Um, he's, for the past couple of months, been texting me, um, how are you, we should meet up. Okay, wait. Uh, yes. She's still dating him? Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So um, she's very jealous of her relationship. Um, so of, the, I, of your relationship? Of her, her relationship. Of her like she, well, she's, she, you know, she's very jealous of her relationship. She's, so how do I tell her that he's been contacting me? Well, you just did it on TV. <laughs> um, and, and I trust that you're a good friend, that you've never slept with him, no. kissed him, or entertained no. anything no. about him. No, I ignore everything. How long has this been going on where he's been calling you? Uh, no, texting, texting for a couple of months. Texting's even worse than calling, because yeah. now you got the evidence. You do right. save the text, don't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> about how many texts has he been sending you over the couple of months, like if you had to add them all up? I would probably say about five or six. Okay, yeah. that's five or six too many. What kinds of things does he say to you? Um, well, just kind of like, let's meet up, um, what are you doing tonight, um, stuff like that, so. <laughs> how old are you, Yolanda? I'm 31. And how old is your friend? Uh, she's 31. Yeah, so <laughs> she's invested the last five years of her life. She's thinking that she's going to get married and have babies with this joker. In the meantime, <laughs> this relationship is, uh, is so over, and yeah. you seem like, I don't, I like her demeanor. <laughs> I, I, I think that you're doing the right thing by wanting to tell her. Yeah. You couldn't live with yourself, because if you're the best friend, when they get married, you realize that you'd be the bridesmaid. Right. Well, he's a cheater, so I'm not sure if they'll actually get married, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, well, but this is the nail in the coffin. Like, there's cheating, and then there's best friend cheating. Yeah. Really? Right. <laughs> Break that up now. Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> Time for one more question. How you doing? Hi, hi, Wendy. How you doing? Very good, thanks. My name is Nicola, and, I, and last August, this past August, my best friend of over 20 years asked me to babysit her dog for her while she went on vacation. One day while I was walking her dog, oh, God. how about he was hit and killed by a car? I lied and told my best friend and her dog ran away. Like, my conscience has been eating me up. So what should I do? Well, by the time you get home, she'll be calling you, because <laughs> you do know that you're on TV. 
Um, oh gosh, I get it. That's a little white lie, and sometimes we tell those to protect somebody. How long had she had the dog? She had a dog for over five years. Like it's okay. a dog. She slept with it and everything. Like oh, okay. every night. Well, she if she, but but can I say something? And I don't mean to be cruel to animal people, but if you care so much about your pets, then why don't you put them in like you know the Hal Wheeler School or you know one of the a pet motel or something like that, some place where they're taken care of, and then you could at least sue and get, you know, if there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> like you're you're a good friend for doing that, but that's a lot of responsibility. It is. Oh my gosh. It is. Just, I, I, I like her demeanor also, yeah, do you? It is. It is. It, I know it's expensive, but I, I, I really She doesn't need that. to be buying expensive dogs. She needs to go to the pound, or the shelter. I, you see? I know, so what should, what should I? What? You should have this conversation with her and be beautiful and, and thoughtful just like you are. Aww. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Eye candy is next, keep it here. Closed captioning is provided by... Okay. We're back, and uh, it's time to reveal our eye candy of the day. If you take a look at my studio audience every single day, my co-host studio audience are the flyest people on TV. Okay. It's very difficult to decide who the eye candy will be, but I only have one How You Doing Diva fan. <laughs> And so I'm going to give it to... Wait, hold on. Oh, yes, drum roll, please. Timey Ortiz! Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Here's your diva fan. Thank you. How you doing, honey? How you doing? Good. Uh, all right, come out here so we can yes. see your head-to-toe look. I love your look. Thank you. Tell me about your sweater, your necklace, and the whole bit. Okay, so it's all well under $50. I paid 20 something bucks for this sweater at Forever 21, 15 for the pants, and 15 for the shoes. Really? Yes. yes. What, no about, lies. what about the necklace? I like how you coordinated. This was 12. 12. At Le La Rue. And then I love your little, uh, very simple silver no. earrings, and your makeup is flawless. Are you Thank a makeup you. artist? Yes, I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Simon. Keep it here. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, from the new movie Best Man Holiday, the lovely Regina Hall will be here. And of course, more juicy, juicy hot topics. I love you for watching today. And I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. Bye.